Why don't we jump into it? So um, thank you everyone for joining this evening. Very nice to be talking with you. My name is James Law. I'm Chief Operating Officer at Breeder. Um, and with me tonight from the other side of the pond is Ian Will, Chief Executive Officer and Founder of Breeder. Um, brief session tonight. We've got 30 minutes in the diary, keen to give a bit of background on the business. And then to be honest, open it up to the floor and answer some questions. So let's jump into it. Ian, do you want to talk a bit to start about about what Breeder is, what we do, and why Breeder was founded. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, James. So, yeah, welcome everyone, and and thank you for interest in Breeder. So, yeah, really appreciate you joining tonight. Um, so, my background was grew up on a farm, cattle, sheep, cropping. Uh, actually, did computer science and robotics through university, and spent a lot of time working in the supply chain. And really, for me, uh, Breeder is both a passion, but also an opportunity that is really now coming to fruition. So. Originally founded Breeder with sort of the intention of working out how data could help farmers uh, improve their returns, improve their profits. But also there was a huge challenge around how we articulated what we we're doing to improve the environment and not just being, uh, I suppose, put at risk from, from those outside of our supply chain who didn't understand what we were doing. So, and actually what we're seeing now is things like beef consumption continues to grow on a global basis. And there's more and more need for animal proteins from a health and nutrition uh, perspective all around the world. And But there is an absolute desire about those in the industry to actually start to think about how we improve, how we change, and how we build better supply chains. So we built Breeder really to help engage with farmers and ranchers now in the US as well to be able to develop these supply chains, in, uh, improve the meat quality, reduce the impact, and, you know, now working with thousands of farmers, uh, nearly me and cattle uh, have gone through the system since we were started um, over the time. And, and it really has been quite an exciting journey and, and really supported by the farmers we have. And, you know, for me, uh, having grown up on a farmer, absolute passion to be able to prove that this industry is key to the future. And we're seeing that in the growth of the beef industry. So, yeah, thanks for having us tonight, James. And, I, and I'll talk shortly a bit about, you know, what we're doing, what traction is happening. But yeah, we'll pass back to you just to sort of explain the, the crowdfunding round and, and why now is an exciting time to be part of this. Yeah, very good. Thanks for that. Um, so I think the, the CLN, which is what's on offer here um, as part of this crowdfunding round, is, is really a, a tack on from a larger deal that we did with our VC investors in the middle of last year. So we looked at it and said, okay, that's, that's great. We raised money successfully from, from those investors and it was on quite favourable terms. But to be honest, farmers and, and the Crowdcube community have been a massively important part of breeders' development and have been supportive for us along the way with our, our growth story, and we wanted to give back. Um, realistically, this probably will be the last time we, we fund with Crowdcube. The business is growing and going in a different direction. Um, so, you know, this, this probably will be the last opportunity, but we wanted to make sure that all of our, the people who have supported us along the way were, were also given the chance to participate, I guess, on the, the same terms. But in terms of why invest, someone actually asked me this last week, and you know, of course, I'm I'm fully vested in in breeder and and into it, and could give you a million different reasons. But if I just, if I had to name three, I think the three key drivers for me as to why I would consider investing breeder are firstly momentum. You know, the business is on the upward trajectory; it's it's growing. I'm sure you've all read the the deck and the statistics we've been putting out there on social media and on Crowdcube. You know, there's great month on month revenue growth um, that's that's continuing to this month and and looks to be going into the next year. Um, we're looking at two million dollars, uh, two million pounds worth of forecast revenue for 2023. Um, and there's a, a really big pipeline of exciting deals and opportunities that we're you know uh, in the way towards executing on. So. Um, yeah, there's a heap of momentum behind the business. Second reason why I think it's a good reason to invest is the market. I mean, the market is, is massive. I know there's a lot of farmers on this call, but it's a, it's a trillion dollar market, um, depending on which, which measurement you take. And, and it's, it's, not, it's not going away. It's not shrinking. To the contrary, it's growing, as Ian was talking about it earlier. Um, and, you know, that's something we want to be a part of. And then I think the th third driver is um, the ESG movement. It's big. Investors are interested in it. Governments and big companies are getting behind it. 
beef emissions are a big issue. You know, I think some statistics quote they're fifteen percent of of all global emissions. But we actually see this as an opportunity, and we are trying to empower farmers to drive down that percentage and giving them the tools to do so. So. There's some good reasons to invest, um, but uh, we, we look forward to your questions if you have any more later on. But Ian, maybe while we're while we're on the topic, do you want to um, touch a bit on progress in the US? I know you've been spending a lot of time there recently, um, and perhaps also how any funds raised will be spent. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, as you say, James, it's uh, been a very exciting time. And obviously, during COVID, we weren't able to come and travel to the US, but during this year, we've come to the US and really, you know, launched very, very fast in the US market. And I think what's been very exciting is some of those reasons that James is talking about, but people are looking to build supply chains They're looking to build the ability to improve and optimize cattle within that supply chain and give transparency so that information that happens from the consumer or the processing can go all the way back to the calf, uh, cow calf operations, they call them over here in the US, for those of you not here, um, right through the system and, and with that track environmental impacts and things like scope three emissions, which maybe not everyone's heard of, but came out of COP in Glasgow, is made, driving a huge change in the last 12 months for those big buyers of animal protein needing to now trace this supply chain and really breeders incredibly uniquely placed in that no one else is offering a supply chain tool with individual animal management that lets you optimize those supply chains and put systems thinking into a supply chain where really buyers and sellers haven't cooperated uh, so much apart from sort of buying and selling cattle. And where they have, it, it's been very tiny part of the market. So in the US, that's meant that we've come over here and we're now working with three decent sized supply chains. Uh, we're working, so UK market is about 50% beef on dairy, so out of the dairy herd. Uh, in the US, we are now probably the dominant player over here in terms of tracking and building supply chains in the US market on that, and really leverage that expertise we've had from the UK that's let us grow that market. We're now working on beef supply chains where there are about 40,000 head that go through these beef supply chains, where it's really looking at top meat eating quality grading and reducing environmental impact. Uh, and then thirdly, we're now starting to work on grass-fed supply chains. There's a huge growth in grass-fed supply chains here in the US. And those supply chains are what are really driving consumer need and, and the ability to look at things like regenerative agriculture is driving a supply chain that needs to link up the genetics with the grass and the soil to be able to produce better beef. And you know these three things have really helped accelerate us up in the, US, in the US market and the revenue sort of speaks for itself. And we've got great collaboration from the packers or processors as they would call them over packers over here. Um, and all the way through the supply chain to actually look at what the future of beef looks like. And I think what's been so exciting is to see that engagement the whole way along the supply chain, which if I was here three years ago in the US for my first trip pre COVID, that didn't exist, but the, the change in dynamic from this environmental impact, the need to be able to drive sustainable supply chains, and also the need to improve the quality and efficiency of those supply chains has been sort of really come on in the COVID world and with technology developing. So for me, you know, the US is one of those places which is the largest beef producing nation in the world. Um, for this to become the billion dollar business, we believe it can be. Uh, we need to be successful here. And in just the six, seven months that we've been here, we've been incredibly successful and see huge pipeline and growth for next year. So really bodes well for the business, for the return on the business as, as we grow this. And, you know, it is very warm in Texas at the moment, which is nice when you're thinking about it being cold in the UK for those who are living there. So that's been enjoyable, but it's it's a different market, that, that's for sure. And, and actually some of the expertise we're learning here is offering uh, interesting opportunity back into the UK as well in terms of some of the experience we've had in Wagyu supply chains and now starting to roll here into the US and some of that experience will come back into the UK to help promote farming in the UK as well so um, as a business though really exciting opportunity largest beef market in the world uh, in terms of beef production and you know really we're now at the center of it and a lot of people know who Breeder is a lot of people are talking to us about how they change their supply chains and you know, if you are interested, do please give us a call uh, and more than happy to have, have a discussion about it. 
Very good. That's great. Thank you. And Ian, obviously you spent a lot of time in the US. Quick random question before we get into the proper Q&A. Have, uh, have you bought yourself a hat or how are you fitting in with the locals? So I don't think the accent's doing it. No, no, no hat yet. Uh, as they say over here, all hat, no cattle if you're not careful. So you have to be <laughs> Very careful. Good. But, uh, Very good. Very good. Yeah. All right. Well, I think the, the next uh, section we were keen to cover in this webinar was a bit of Q&A. And please, I'd encourage everyone on the call to please get in your questions. We're absolutely happy to uh, answer anything. Nothing's off limits. Um, but we, we did have a couple of questions come in before the session. So let's um, kick off with those in the meantime. Um, and Ian, I'm going to put you again, sorry, in the hot seat. Sorry. Firstly, for you, <laughs> excuse me. The, um, the reputation of meat production, beef producers, um, uh, both in the UK, US and other markets, um, and its impact on the environment is, is relatively poor. Breeders obviously making some quite bold claims about um, emissions reduction and the environmental benefits. Just wondering if you could expand on that, please. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, firstly, James, as I said earlier, like beef consumption and animal protein consumption worldwide is growing. And we actually think it plays a very pivotal part in the human diet with everything to do with B12, nutrition, iron, all of that is absolutely a key part to, you know, especially brain development in children and, and everything that happens. So we, we do think more than just environment, we have to be able to solve the environmental issues because of what meat does for human development and, and things like brain development and nutrition. So you know, and you're right, the environmental side is a is a challenge. We need to be able to address this. We need to be able to address it with facts, with data, and we need to be able to prove that we are doing an improved job. Uh, for those of you that are really close to this will know that, you know, the methane cycle is, is a different one to carbon in terms of half-life and, and how it works with the soil and with the animals as it goes through. But that said, it doesn't mean we don't have to improve and, and prove that we're improving. So, you know, the big thing here is if we can improve uh, feed conversion and productivity, there's actually an opportunity through you know, the use of data to improve the health and welfare of animals, improve the nutrition of wel welfare of the animals, and who are, therefore will then grow better, be happier, uh, if you put it that way, and mm -hmm. produce a better quality product at the end of it. But in doing so, because they're growing faster and because they're happier, actually produce less emissions uh, to produce the same amount of meat. And I think you know a lot of our claims are around how do we help uh, producers there's sort of a there's a three world three prong part to this one is you know we're helping producers become more profitable by being more efficient by producing faster growing animals that are healthier that need less medications and vaccinations we then have the ability that on the back of that they actually produce really good quality animal protein through you know grass and nutrition that comes out of it so we're producing a really nutritious product that comes with it but in doing both of those things, we're actually reducing emissions through those efficiency gains. So the, the exciting thing is here is through better use of data, through better use of tracking, uh, and you know we are getting 18 to 29% reduction in emissions for those people who are using supply chains. How does that happen? That happens through you know making sure animals are growing faster, making sure we have good genetics with the individual animal tracking we're doing, and making sure we're not overfeeding animals through targeting when they're gonna be ready uh, for um, processing so you know all of these things are things that the data systems can help both enable people to make better decisions but also uh on top of that they they can prove it out and they can therefore you know take the data and show to the world that we are doing a better job as an industry and so you know for me that's very exciting yeah makes a lot of sense makes a lot of sense and then I think the next question we had through was on, on markets. So the question was, do we have any aspirations for other markets like South America and Australia? What are your thoughts? Yeah, so definitely. I mean, you know, back to the earlier point, the, the USA is a very big market. And, and at this stage, we have a lot of opportunity here. We certainly have uh, testing already happening on the Australian market. Um, there is a good opportunity there with the Australia and New Zealand market uh, to be able to improve utilize things like EID uh, for those of you that know cattle for traceability um, to be able to improve quality and productivity there. And certainly very sophisticated markets. I think South America is a different one. I think South America is a bit later for us. We, we are interested, the ability for data to improve uh, the efficiency in somewhere like Brazil, where Brazil is 
second to America in beef production worldwide, but they have twice as many animals to do it. So it just shows the inefficiency that still exists in that market. And, you know, the impact you could have through improving efficiency in Brazil uh, that would require less land and therefore hopefully less uh, deforestation and everything that happens. So there is a passion to get into there, but it really from a business perspective, you know, we are operating now successfully in the biggest meat beef market of the world. And we need to continue to grow that market. And so, you know, the use of funds for this round is really just to continue to grow that, get the business very close to break even and enable us to um, do a bigger round that at that point we can make decisions about other opportunities. But, you know, this, we are riding a wave of opportunity over here and, and you know, this will get us as close to break even on the back of this crowdfunding round. So, um, yeah, really appreciate uh, the question, but yeah, at this stage, you know, we're business focused and we want to get a good return for investors and, and those things will come when we have the ability and, and bandwidth to do it. Yep. No, plenty, plenty of exciting things uh, in front of us. There's another question in here on enterprise clients. So, you know, I know in the deck and some of the, the materials that have gone out publicly, we talked about the pipeline and the 17 million, you know, worth of, of potential deals. Um, in the in the sort of short term pipeline, um, this question saying, what kind of enterprise clients do you have um, that have been recently signed? Do you want to maybe provide a bit more background there? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, we are working. When we say enterprise clients, this is really where we're working with uh, customers to build supply chain. So, it usually involves multiple farms, sometimes hundreds of farms that sit within that supply chain. And, you know, in a way, it helps bring them all together to be able to produce a better product and collaborate between them, uh, which is not saying this happened in the industry that much. So, uh, you know, even last week, uh, which hasn't been announced on any of the, the CrowdCube, we have another client that's been agreed. This is a 40,000 head uh, supply chain. It's sourcing off 200 cow-calf operations so in, in the U.S., and with it, we're developing, you know, all natural product, uh, high, high meat grading and meat quality product that comes out of the back of it. It has, as it scales up with the animals coming through, it has the ability to deliver us another million dollars a year of revenue um, through that. So, you know, that is really exciting for the business. There's plenty more of those in the pipeline uh, in terms of just the scale and size of the market that we're operating here. And, and really... You know, offers a huge opportunity to scale further as we add other things like financing to that, which helps us drive further and further revenue on top of that, while still getting a better return for producers as we get them higher prices, better returns, and reducing their uh, reducing their cost base to improve profit. So, you know, we don't get anything where we don't earn revenue where we haven't actually helped the producer become better at what they do and and get better profit as well. So everyone we've been into that's how we get these clients is through getting better returns for our customers and and we share in that upside very good very good there is a, another question um here that's come through facebook uh just asking for a bit more of a description on the terms of the investment um you happy for me to cover that off here yep go for it so this is a uh um, convertible loan note, which is um, it's a debt instrument to begin with that converts into equity on certain events happening in the future. Um, key things to keep in mind for this are it's it's on the same terms and, and needs to be on the same terms as a previous investment which reached first close in the middle of last year. Um, it carries an 8% interest rate um, it carries a 25% discount on conversion and a $25 million valuation cap on conversion, which means that if Rita is obviously um, valued higher than that on conversion, then, then you, the, if you've taken up the CLN, you get, you get the benefit of the, the lower valuation and more, more bang for your buck, I guess. Um, so, yeah, it's a debt, debt instrument converting into equity um, and... Um, he, I think this this smallest crowd cube investment is 10, 10 pounds um, that's permitted. Um, and um, yeah, but if you've got any more questions on the specific terms, feel free to reach out. Absolutely happy to um, to have a call or an email to to discuss. Um, so I think unless there's anything else from uh, the crowd, absolutely. You know, happy to talk further, but we've sort of run to the end of our questions. Um, Ian, do you do you perhaps want to wrap up? Yeah, look, 
you know, firstly, thanks for hosting James, obviously, but uh, no, thank you everyone for joining. Really exciting place where the business is in at the moment and, and really appreciate all the support we've already had on Crowdcube. Uh, sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> That's not ideal. We'll have to edit that out when we repost it. But uh, no, I really appreciate all of the support on Crowdcube and, uh, you know, really excited to have the people who have joined and especially those farmers who have got in touch with me and put money in already. Um, really do appreciate their time. If you've got further questions, don't hesitate to get in touch and, and more than happy to personally have a uh, personally have a chat about what we're up to and where we're going. I think it's it's an industry that's in significant change over the next five years and, and Breeder probably is better placed than most in terms of our ability to address it. So that is very exciting. And the vision of what it was three or four years ago is now really coming to fruition with the changes in the market. So um, yeah, appreciate your support and love the fact that we've had so many farmers that have already invested. It just shows that, yeah. you know, that engagement right down there has been very, very exciting. So yeah, with that, thank you very much. And we look forward to chatting again soon. And sorry, just before we dial off and being reminded, Ian, to uh, we should be giving our contact details to, to the group. So um, if you want to get in touch, uh, best is by email, james.law, L-A-W, at breeder.co or ian.wheel at breeder.co. No, um, no, put your email wrong. Mine's just ian at breeder.co. So apologies. Um, it makes it complicated. But <laughs> so feel free to get in touch. Um, and, uh, yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, everyone.